Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time once again to return to Galarian for some more Wrath of the Righteous. Let's get up these stairs and meet up with our allies. Yes, we're heavily over- oh hello, that's gonna break isn't it? Well, we won't be going back that way anytime soon. So, last time we lost a lot of allies to enemy negative channelers. That's going to make the upcoming encounters harder. Oh, hello. What's this? Do we have guests? <laughs> Just in time. The place is a bit of a mess. And I haven't even poured the blood into the goblets yet. Why don't you... Oh! The face is... <clears throat> That's what I get for sleeping on the sofa for a few hours and then recording at about half past five in the morning. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. The face of this demoness could be called pretty if it had eyes. Her mouth slowly widens into a smug grin. <gasps> what an unexpected surprise! Staunton, my little sweetheart. A long time no see. I've missed you so much. Have you missed me? Admit it. You missed me terribly. I don't think this is genuine surprise. I feel this is mock surprise. The demon's mouth drops open in surprise and she brings her manicured hand up to cover it. Again, you wench! His hardened, craggy face, like storm weathered stone, twists as if in pain. Minago, the one who. Be careful. She's one of the deadliest creatures in the whole demon horde. She was once responsible for a massacre in Canabras. She must be back to finish what she started. <laughs> hey, demon woman! What's wrong with your face? Uh, this doesn't quite feel like the kind of thing Althea would come out with. Um, that's very declamatory, but... You know what? No. No, let, let's ask Staunton how he knows this woman. Does he know me? Staunton, darling. Tell them all how close we were. This sounds like it's going to be something pretty bad. That wench? She's the one who led me astray. She's the reason my life has gone to the abyss. She's the reason why Teresin fell. Go on. Oh my, like butter wouldn't melt. What I remember is how eagerly you would run to our trysts. How you begged to see me again. How you promised you'd do anything I asked. By your own free will, you said this. And now you claim that Dresden fell because of me. No, no, my dear. That was entirely your own doing. If they're both blaming each other, then maybe one's to blame? Perhaps there is some sharing of responsibility here. I'll beat your lying lips into your filthy throat! Oh, now, nah. if, 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 if we get a chance for him to get the kill, we absolutely should take it. Now, Staunton, don't say things like that. Not about these lips, the ones you kissed so sweetly. Staunton, dearest, don't you love me anymore? Remember how good we were together? I was so hoping that we could patch things up. There's something about her intonation which is coming across as insincere. I'll kill you! Coward! Oh, I see some nice low initiative rolls there. Right. The fight is on. Let's, if we charge across here with blocking, let's go for this one instead. Leave open space for other allies to join the fray. Now, Camellia, 
what could you do that might help this situation very much? You know what? Oh, mate, is she just out of range? She is in range. Do we, do we not? Um, she's got the strength. So, it would be nice to enlarge Sila. She's got the strength to counteract the size penalty to attack. But I'm honestly thinking we want to save this. Keep that buckler up and just, just go out to here for now. Maybe a little bit further. And we want to be getting you some kind of new spells or abilities soon. Put it damage. Oh, not good. All right, we are running low. Oh, we're running on empty. Okay, fine. Now, it feels very unreasonable to just divine zap as a cantrip? Really now? Should, should, ooh. Yeah, let, let's just try it. Okay. Attack! You're all right, you know, so you gotta save. Get him there, Staunton. What was that, just a double move? Well, there are many enemies who are going to get a turn soon. Right, Lark. We see Caster. You've crossed the wrong mantra. We shoot Caster. Little problem. We can handle a little problem. Oh, okay. Did that fail or succeed? That succeeded. All right, well, look, we're going to chug a potion and strike. Wait, can we? Yes, we can. Do so. Into the fray. Oh, that was rubbish. Okay, look. I'll cut you wide open. So, I'm trying to rotate clear of the walls. And it got stuck on rotating the wooden hold. So. We shall overcome. That appears to be a no save, like a direct damage. Interesting. Oh, okay. Well, shoot away. You won't survive me. Ah, uh, yep, yep, yep. This will leave a bruise. just needs to keep standing until her turn. Right about now. Second potion! It's not much, but it counts. The light take you. Um Sure, healing X. It should work. Okay, Is it fine. Flawed? We've we've helped her already, sure. The spirits demand your blood. Oh well. It's gonna get rough in a moment. By which I mean we're gonna bring our healer up to Sealer's aid. Uh shoot the magician. Right. And then they can start channeling negative energy, which is gonna be very bad for us. Oh, that was stupid because she doesn't have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, look. Do Ooh. not hold back. Yeah, take a bit of holy damage and a massive axe. I mean that that works as well, right? You endure. Oh, 
pity's sake. I'll just sit here. Don't worry about me. I'll just sit here. Don't worry about me. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem here because we can't give her a potion. We can heal her. Hello. This is base to base contact. You are effed. Oh, <laughs> I know what I should have done last turn. You can tell I haven't played PFS in a while. This is a wand of cure like wounds. Oh, that wasn't very good. Okay. Uh, well, Lan, just shoot. I mean, sure. Just like this one. Make every strike count. Okay, well, look, we're just going to try stabbing you over right here. A whole two points of damage there, you know, massive. But it's all right. Fine. Okay, look, so what we're going to do is use this wand. That's more like it. So nobody died just yet, but we came pretty damn close. Also, why was that not everybody? Allies... hard to tell how they fared. Okay, this is blocked. That's not good. Oh, lovely, it's a skill check. Hey, Lan, this looks like one of yours. I stand ready. But let's blatantly do some more healing before we go on. That was not a good roll. This wand is uh, coming through a bit of a lifesaver, but okay, look, everybody. We're gonna. Oh, we got a skill check. Let's absolutely try and make this one. Well, that failed. Um, can someone else try it? No, we're not getting a reroll. That's unfortunate. Thanks, Lan. Here's some. As soon as you step into the chamber, your vision seems to darken and your knees buckle. You struggle to keep your balance. The air in here is laden with the power coming from the stone. Suddenly your head is filled with voices, screaming, whispering, cackling, threatening voices, pleading for help, shrieking curses and taunts. You blink and the illusion passes. Congratulations. You made it all the way here. This is it. Your precious ward stone. Well, what are you planning to do now, hmm? I could kill you where you stand, but wouldn't it be nice if you could die in battle like heroes? No one. I want you to die in despair, scrabbling around like rats in the blighted ruins of your city, blind and broken, your flesh scabbed and seeping, and every knowing precisely what was done to you. A demon of a mocking smile stands beside the wall stone and she has no eyes. Sounds terrifying. Except that's how we've been living for generations. <laughs> you can always trust Lan to think on the positive side. There isn't a soul that can resist the temptations of the abyss. Even a stone Your precious ward stone, weakened from the injury inflicted by Discari, 
has almost succumbed to my charms. Soon the whole barrier around the world wound, the gift of your useless goddess, will be a weapon of the abyss. Just a little more, and boom. <laughs> Every city with one of these eyesores stuck in the middle of it, from Canabras to Nerosian, will turn into smoking craters, and all the mortals into red sludge beneath our hooves. That was a good laugh. I liked that laugh. It did a good job of resonating the description. So you have a choice. Especially you, my pet. Kiss me on my dainty hoof. Pledge your loyalty to Baphomet. And when the world falls, its ruin shall be yours. Look, just who are you anyway? You clearly think you're very important. You've already forgotten me. You mortals have awfully short memories. Even shorter than your little lives. Staunton, sweetums. Don't you want to introduce me to your friends properly? No? Well, I'd better do it myself. I am Minago, Lily Two and faithful servant of Baphomet, and leader of his armies. The city is mine now. I'm just starting to settle in, get things just how I like them. But once I'm finished, I promise you, the results will be simply to die for. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed here, but Minago uses a lot of anachronistic dialogue that feels out of place in a pseudo-medieval setting. Uh, for, towards Staunton Vane, she's already said long time no see, which is a, a fairly modern sort of 20th century phrase. And then here, she's called him Sweetums, which is a, again a, a very recent term of endearment. And then, simply to die for, again, a lot of anachronistic stuff that doesn't fit, which makes perfect sense when you consider she comes from another plane of existence where life and everything else is very different. And, you know, she can see multiple other worlds and stuff like that. It's a place between worlds. You know, it's a hellish abyss, basically. So her saying things that are jarring and immersion-breaking helps to increase that sense of otherness, that alien feeling that she doesn't quite belong here. Kind of like when Doctor Who uses phrases that are completely inappropriate for an era because he is all muddled up from seeing so many different places at once. And it was such a charming little place until you sullied it with your presence. It had such lovely boulevards, quiet and shaded. You took those away from me, and I shan't forgive you for that. Now I'm a little concerned here because um, Lana's had a, a speech, Camellia has had one. Is Sela now going to get her turn to say something a little bit as well? If so, that'd be very formulaic. But then also if she doesn't, it would feel like she's really missing out, which is not ideal either. So it's a case of, are they taking, they're like, look, different point of view from every party member to be shown in this scene, even though it's a preset party and these are the only ones you can literally have by this point. I don't know, but it's an interesting way of constructing a scene. They've done much worse things than spoil the promenades. All the people they've killed. What did I just say? There we go then. So let's see if they're now restricted to just one each, or if any of them gets to speak up again, and how the dialogue gets shared. Yes, yes, of course, you're right. I grieve for the common folk as well. Is this turning into an inter-party bungle? You never like an inter-party bungle, it never ends well. You feel righteous fury swell within you. How dare this demon besmirch the ground of this beautiful world with her hooves, a world created by the gods and cultivated by mortals. And these cultists, how dare they betray all that is sacred in this world and join the forces of the foulest evil? Can they repent and redeem themselves, or have they followed the path of evil past the point of no return? The wardstone seems to sense your thoughts. The chamber grows slightly brighter. 
oh, we, we got to do this. But we also want to know what she thinks she's doing and how much she's willing to tell us. What are you doing to the stone? Well, quite what am I doing to it? Probably the same thing I did to many of your comrades. Sweetly and tenderly persuading it to abandon the mortals and join our side. Prepare to fight to the death, demon! We won't let that happen. Well said, Irabeth. Succumb to the rage. You feel a sudden rush of wild rage, and with it comes a feeling of monstrous, unbridled, destructive power. It is like the feeling, like the power you felt in the shield maze when you were confronting Savamelek. But now it feels more fully fledged, more conscious. Um, right. It would be possibly nice to see some something on the mythic path of, of demons, but it doesn't feel right for a life oracle. I'm gonna go with this one then. We shall reveal the light of heaven. Your victory celebrations are a little premature, demon. Echoing the holy flame erupting from your hand, the light now gets brighter and brighter until it floods the chamber. You hear the voices again. Stronger now, they repeat your words like a choir of angels. You have performed a good action. Just in case you weren't sure. Hey, no eyes. Didn't you tell us that heaven had turned its back on us and no one would come to our aid? Don't listen to her. The fiend wants us to lose all hope. She won't succeed. I'm done with this shit. I only followed this book to Menace <laughs> because I thought the Crusaders had had it. And there was no other way to protect my family. But now I see that there is hope. I won't bow before these heinous idols ever again. If they kill me, at least I'll die a decent death. Uh, what, what's that quote that's frequently overused in the chrysalids? When the wicked man repents of his wickedness, he is forgiven in the eyes of the Lord. I feel this man might yet go to a good place in the afterlife. Maybe he'll even survive. Yes! Return to our side, friends! Have courage! We will welcome you back! And heaven never abandoned you, no matter what this deceiver told you. Too right, Sila. Turn coat. I'll cut out your heart. Oh, this ain't gonna end well. We'll see how tough you really are. We let you frighten us once, but it won't happen again. Defeat is not an option. All right, so what have we got here by way of potions, scrolls, and other fancy things that we can use? Bless, prayer. I'm thinking prayer. Yes. Just remember that she's on a reduced capacity in the first round, so let's do it. I'm sorry. Your enemy, Monago, avoids the negative effects of your spells because of their spell resistance. That's fine. Spell resistance is a rare ability that can also be acquired through some spells and equipment. Most demons have spell resistance. If a creature you are trying to cast a spell on has spell resistance, then to cast a spell successfully, you must make a cast level check. D20 plus your cast level. For the spell to work, your result must be equal to or greater than the creature's spell resistance value. Spell resistance works even against the beneficial spells cast by the allies. To overcome the enemy's spell resistance, you should give your spellcaster the spell penetration feat or improve your spells with metamagic. If an enemy's spell resistance is too high, don't waste spells on them and attack by other means. Hey, look, th this blessed spell, this was all for our benefit, right? Strike the wicked one! Now get in there! Okay, that was a shame. 
Lan, shoot that one. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Yeah, too right. Can't have them constantly channeling like that. It's bad for our health. Oh yeah, Staunton, you get in there, pal. Oh, oh, who who do we enlarge? Who do we I think vengeance has come. Yes. Lightning bolt? On a single target? What excessive overkill. She's showing off. What a bitch. Now, Althea, you are... Non-stacking bonuses. That's fine. You did it for everyone else. So, look. Turn it to a step. Then I'm thinking... A scroll of prayer, uh, a scroll of bless, rather. Sila, do you have potions? You don't. Let's fix that. I feel a potion drinking extravaganza is about to commence. All, all one potions a bit. Right, you. Fiend from the Never Realms. No glory without risk. Wait, you? Okay, Lan. Shoot the bad you guys. Survive me. <laughs> yep, that works. That? Oh, mate, he needs twenties to hit her. That's just not fair. Right. Okay. Um, you're looking a bit hurt. You. We can't use the healing X on you. Sealer has already been received the benefits next step. Interesting. Oh, right, well, in that case, look, we'll just totally charge in and attack. What, well, why not? Okay, fine, then we turn. Well, that's literally. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. We should be able to do that. Okay, well, look. Get that magic weapon ready. Get up near the fight. Be a target. In which case... Ah, oh, she doesn't get good. Oh, fuck's fuck sake! How are we supposed to take a fireball at this level? I think we all just got dead. And it's triggered some kind of cutscene because they want us to live. The fact that they stood back up. I'm tired of playing around now. You want to know what will happen when I'm done with the Wardstone? Here's a little demonstration. The demoness whispers a spell and a wave of darkness swoops through the chamber. Your companions wince in pain, but it is nothing compared to what you feel. Thousands of voices. More like six or seven at the most. Thousands of voices once again burst into your mind, drowning you with their moans, screams and sobs. Pain rocks through your skull. Your evil spells won't stop a righteous army. Although your fireballs probably will. Iomade is with us. Yes, yes. Keep telling yourself that. The roar of voices blends into an unbearable wail of screaming, and your vision goes dark. Mostly because of the fireball. So the question is, if we survived that, she probably let us go because she was ridiculously overpowered and, well, clearly overpowered us. So who saved us? Who got us out of there? Praise Iomade, you woke up. Healing your wounds was easy. 
But you were unconscious for so long, I was starting to worry we'd lost you. What happened? We couldn't stand up to the demoness. Her spells were too strong. <sighs> it's all right. We'll handle it somehow. You blacked out, but Staunton and I managed to get you here to the Defender's Heart. It used to be a tavern, but now it's our headquarters. We're gathering our forces here, and we're preparing to strike back. Oh, poor Staunton, how's he doing? I suppose we might get to find out eventually. That's almost enough to level, or enough to level exactly. I found a cultist dispatch in the dungeons. It seems they are holed up in the Tower of Estrod. This feels like a conversation ender, but then everything is clear also feels like a conversation ender. So everything is far from clear. Demons have been filling Canabras with their spies and infiltrators for a long time. Unfortunately, I don't have enough people to attack the place right now. At least not blindly. I'd be grateful if you snuck in there and scouted out the situation. But just scouting. Don't be a hero. Yeah, we saw how that turned out last time, didn't we? What do you plan to do next? You heard what the demon said. They're going to desecrate the Wardstone and blow up the whole barrier around the World Wound. That would be an even worse disaster than the World Wound's expansion before the Second Crusade. Not only Canabras, but every city with a wardstone will be destroyed, including the capital. We can't allow that no matter what. We will retake it, even destroy it if we must. Iomade's gift must not become a weapon of the Abyss. Uh, in that case, what is the situation in the city? Bad, but not hopeless. We're constantly getting news, and new sources of resistance keep springing up in the districts where everyone seemed to be dead. The survivors are gathering here. You should see them. Their faces, their eyes burning with determination. The city is destroyed, but our resistance is not broken. We will keep fighting. Can you help me in any way? First of all, we need to decide what to do with the stone once we get it. Well, purify it. What I'm about to say is classified. Or replace it. A traveler came to the city recently. A blind elf calling himself the Storyteller. He insisted he be allowed to examine the ward stone, and he raised the alarm when his study was finished. Even before the demon attack, he had found some damage or flaw in the stone. So th this Storyteller is a Alcat Games NPC. He was in the in the Kingmaker adaptation as well. I don't think he's part of the original adventure path. Prelate Hulrun dismissed his words as nonsense, borderline blasphemy. But between you and me, the Prelate's opinion isn't worth much. I think the storyteller really? knew what he was talking about. We could use his advice right now. If only we knew where he was. <laughs> I remember the storyteller spent a lot of time talking to Staunton, a dwarf from my unit. You saw him during the demon attack. The elf asked him about the history of the Crusades. Maybe the storyteller told Staunton something about where we could find him if anything happened. Hmm. There's another problem. After the attack, the demons began to gather their forces at the Grey Garrison. It'll be even harder to take them with a head on assault. But I once heard soldiers talking about a secret entrance to the garrison. Trouble is, I have no idea where to look for it. While you explore the city, please keep your eyes open. In case you find something we can use. This doesn't really feel like helping me so much as giving me more work to do and unloading all your problems on me, lady. <laughs> and one last thing. The Eagle Watch has lost a lot of soldiers recently. Some were killed, but... Others simply haven't been seen since the attack. In the chaos that is now Canabras, it's next to impossible to confirm anything for sure. <clears throat> One of the missing fighters is Janna Aldori. A new recruit in the Watch. She got along well with Sila, and she often went drinking with her. I honestly thought Sila and Janna had died together. But now Sila's returned with you and there's no sign of Janna. If you learn anything of her whereabouts when you're out in the city, please report back. I'll absolutely see what I can do. 
Aldori implies she's from the region around Bravoy. Um. Hmm. Since we established at the beginning of the campaign that Althea is from out of town and new to the area and doesn't necessarily know very much about the Wardstones and because she's just been knocked out and had her brains all scrambled, I think this is a fair question to ask because you, the viewers, might not be as informed on how the Wardstones operate as the rest of us, let's say. The Wardstones are a gift of Ioma Day. Created personally by her herald, a mighty angel, and a general of the Celestial Armies. The Wardstones keep the world wound from expanding. They stand along the border of the territory controlled by the demons, creating a barrier to keep them inside. The Canabras Obelisk was the first to be placed. It is the key to the whole barrier. We cannot leave it in the hands of those monsters from the Abyss. Very well, I, I suppose everything is clear. May the goddess help you. Somehow. We're still fighting, which means that Canabra still hasn't fallen. If you come across any groups in the city that can fight, send them here to the Defender's Heart. We'll need every fighter we can muster for the final assault. Of course. Yes, one more thing. If you're in the area, check out this address. It's our house. Mine and Anevia's. Well, it was our house. If the building is still standing, open the hidden compartment in the kitchen. It's filled with supplies for a rainy day. You can take whatever you find. You have more need of it. Wait, so we've gone from Anevia to Anevia back to Anevia? It's still Anevia, but hey. So we probably get out of bed now. There's a nice bed where we can rest, a chest here where we can keep our things. And I'm believing this chest would contain some, like, bonus Kickstarter backer items which haven't been released yet. Or I should probably check and see if they have and if I should grab them. But for now I imagine it'll be empty. Oh, hello, there we go. Some nice magic boots, which we apparently picked up while exploring the Grey Garrison. An amulet. And Head Chomper is back for Pet Owlcat. Awesome, let's have all those. So, head chomper. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Hmm. Do we get to equip him somewhere? Oh, hello. I see. Yes, we do. Um, there were boots. Unidentified. Interesting. So, yeah, we need someone to identify those. That's good, but we might have some kind of identification mechanic, and it's not just automatic. Silver Tongue Amulet, plus two on Persuasion check. Sure, we could do with that. And we are so close to leveling, but we nearly did it. Oh, nearly. So we should also be looking for someone to sell things to. Identifying items. You have received the item Boots that no one in your party has been able to identify. To learn the properties of magic items, you need to identify it. Once the item is added to your inventory, the character with the highest Knowledge Arcana skill bonus will make a Knowledge Arcana ch skill check with a DC that depends on the specific item. If the check is successful, you will auto immediately learn every magical property the item has. If the check has failed, you can automatically identify the item at any vendor. Automatically? Is there a fee involved or do we just say, hey, yeah, they look at it and say, yeah, that's what it is. Upon increasing their knowledge, our kind of skill points, character will make a temp Yeah, yeah, so we, had, we try again once the skill goes up. But I'm thinking this is a reasonably good place to end the episode. I've been playing about 40 minutes, and I really should try and keep these episode, like, episode lengths down under an hour, because otherwise the processing time when I upload them is horrendous. So I'm going to stop here. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I do look forward to seeing you all in the next one. I'm going to say goodbye for now, though, and cheerio, everyone!